we want to solve the initial value problem using the method of substitution. So far we've discussed some general substitutions, Bernoulli equations, and homogeneous equations. To identify our substitution, let's begin by dividing through by y squared, or multiplying both sides by y to the power of negative 2. y to the power of negative 2 times y squared times y prime is equal to y prime equals y to the power of negative 2 times y cubed is equal to y, and then minus y to the power of negative 2 times 3x is equal to 3x y to the power of negative 2. Now if we subtract y on both sides of the equation, we should be able to recognize we have a Bernoulli differential equation. Subtracting y on both sides, we have y prime minus y is equal to negative 3x, y to the power of negative 2. Bernoulli equations are in the form of y prime plus a function of x times y equals a function of x times y to the power of n. Notice in our case, p of x is equal to negative 1. Also notice n is equal to negative 2, which is the exponent on the y on the right. This in case our substitution is going to be v equals y to the power of 1 minus n, or in our case, y to the power of 1 minus negative 2, indicating v equals y cubed. And therefore, v prime or dv dx is equal to 3y squared times y prime. Notice our first term is y prime, and we have v prime equals 3y squared y prime. And therefore, let's go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 3y squared. This gives us 3y squared y prime minus 3y cubed is equal to 3y squared times negative 3x y to the power of negative 2 is negative 9x. y squared times y to the power of negative 2 is y to the 0, which is equal to 1. And now we perform substitution. Again, 3y squared y prime is equal to v prime minus 3 y cubed is equal to v, giving us minus 3v equals negative 9x. Now we have a linear differential equation, which is the form v prime plus p of x times v equals f of x. Notice p of x is equal to the constant function negative 3, which we need to recognize because we'll solve using an integrating factor. So if p of x is equal to negative 3, then the integrating factor r of x is equal to e to the power of the integral of negative 3 dx, and therefore r of x is equal to e to the power of negative 3x. For the next step, we multiply both sides of the equation by the integrating factor. This gives us e to the power of negative 3x times v prime minus e to the power of negative 3x times 3v equals e to the power of negative 3x times negative 9x on the right. Let's write that as negative 9x e to the power of negative 3x. And now the left side of the equation is equal to the derivative of the integrating factor and the dependent variable v. So we can write the right side as a derivative with respect to x of the integrating factor of e to the power of negative 3x times v. And we can check this if we want using the product rule. And now we integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x. On the left, the integral undoes a derivative, and we're left with the integrating factor of e to the negative 3x times v. On the right, we need to use integration by parts, which recall is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Performing integration by parts on the right, we will let u equal negative 9x, and we'll let dv equal e to the power of negative 3x dx. This indicates that du is equal to the derivative of negative 9x with respect to x times dx, which gives us negative 9dx. And to find v, we integrate e to the power of negative 3x, which requires u substitution, where u is equal to negative 3x, du equals negative 3dx, and therefore negative 1 third du equals dx. Integrating both sides, we get v equals negative 1 third e to the power of negative 3x. So the integral of negative 9x e to the negative 3x dx is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Well, u times v is going to be positive 3x e to the negative 3x. And then minus the integral of v du. Notice v times du is equal to positive 3 e to the negative 3x dx.
the right side looks better, but now we need to perform u substitution to integrate 3 e to the negative 3x dx, where u is equal to negative 3x. So we have e to the negative 3x times v equals 3x e to the negative 3x, and we have minus 3 times negative 1 third e to the negative 3x, and then plus c. Simplifying one last time, we have e to the negative 3x v is equal to 3x e to the negative 3x, and then plus e to the negative 3x plus c. And now we solve for v, we can divide everything by e to the power of negative 3x, or multiply by e to the power of positive 3x. Let's multiply both sides by e to the power of positive 3x, which gives us e to the 3x times e to the negative 3x times v is v, equals 3x e to the negative 3x times e to the 3x is 3x, and then plus e to the negative 3x times e to the positive 3x is e to the zero, which is equal to one, plus c e to the power of positive 3x. And now before we can determine the constant c, we need to write the equation back in terms of x and y by replacing v with y cubed. This gives us y cubed is equal to 3x plus one plus c e to the 3x. And now we can use the initial condition to determine the constant c. Let's do this on the next slide. Using y of zero equals two, we substitute zero for x and two for y, which gives us two cubed is equal to three times zero plus one plus c times e to the zero, which gives us eight is equal to one plus c, and therefore c is equal to seven. So now we know the particular solution is y cubed is equal to three x plus one plus seven e to the three x. While this is the particular solution, let's write y as a function of x by taking the cube root of both sides of the equation. This gives us the particular solution y is equal to the cube root of the quantity three x plus one plus seven e to the three x. Before we go, let's verify our solution by looking at the slope field as well as the point zero comma two given by the initial condition. So here we have the graph of the particular solution. Notice how it does pass through the point zero comma two and does fit nicely in the slope field. I hope you found this helpful.